I have this recurring problem with watercolor sketchbooks where my watercolors don't look good because of the paper. If you're like me and you cannot find a sketchbook that works well with wet mediums, I want to show you one of the few I actually like and it's the Etcher Perfect Sketchbook. Hi, I'm Françoise. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So a while back, I think it was in 2021, I got to collaborate with Etcher and I taught a few live classes for them. And I got to try one of their perfect sketchbooks. And even though it's 100% cotton paper, I wasn't expecting a lot back then, to be honest, because I'm so picky with watercolor sketchbooks. A lot of people seem to like. But I was really surprised with how well the paper reacted to watercolor, as you can see right here. No ugly drying lines on the landscape that took a lot of water to paint. And Etcher recently reached out again. So naturally, I asked for the perfect sketchbook because I know I can confidently recommend it. And for me, it will be an opportunity to start something new and for you maybe to try it out if you were on the fence. So later in the video, I'm going to show you what I'm able to paint on the sketchbook. But first, I think we should take a closer look at it. You can find the perfect sketchbook in both an A4 or A5 size. And this is the bigger one that I have here, actually. And as you can see, the cover is pretty sturdy. There's even a little strap to hold everything in place. And total, they are 44 pages, as well as a pocket at the back to store little things. I don't use that, but I suppose it could be handy if you travel. A big thing about this sketchbook I remember hearing a lot about when it came out was that it lays flat. And while I think it will still be a little bit challenging to paint in the middle because sometimes the water will stagnate a little bit still, it still performs well with that, whether you open a page in the beginning, the middle, or at the end of the sketchbook. So it's definitely a plus. About the paper now, it's 100% cotton, it's cold press, and it's 300 grams per square meter which for me is the best and the most versatile paper type for watercolor. And I think that's part of why it's a good sketchbook because I've tried some 100% cotton sketchbooks out there that were a lot thinner, maybe 240 grams per square meter or something like that. And they couldn't handle water that well. I got a bunch of lines and I really didn't enjoy the experience. Now about the tooth of the paper, the perfect sketchbook is not too grainy nor too smooth. So that's also a plus for versatility of paintings, I think. And you'll see it's not just paintings. I'll show you more about that later. Additional features are the sketchbook is vegan friendly and the paper is acid free. So it wouldn't turn yellow over time. And price-wise, it's hard to buy it alone, which is the only thing I wish was different, really. Because I see right now it's a bundle of three, and the three of this A4 sketchbook are currently priced on Etcher's website for $169.50, and on Amazon you can get the same bundle for $156.95. So when you've never tried it before, I realized that this could be a huge turnoff because it's quite pricey despite all the amazing reviews on Amazon and uh, I hope that I really change that in the future that we have the option to buy just one and if we already do and I'm not aware of it please let us know in the comments. Now I'm really excited to paint the sketchbook again and I really wanted to have fun with this one and I decided to use not one medium but three and you'll see it's not all watercolor. The first one is watercolor and I've been craving to paint seaside subjects probably because the summer is coming and I wanted to paint a buoy. So I used my Sanity watercolors on there and I started with a simple background. You can see it was going well, but I did notice that you cannot compare the perfect sketchbook paper to the best watercolor papers like Archon. It's probably obvious, but I think it's nice to just say it because it still dries a bit faster than those papers. But take it from a picky sketchbook person, painting on the surface feels agreeable and every time I've used this sketchbook, I notice I'm able to paint what I want and make it look as good as my ash works. After the background, I started on the buoy itself and you can see the colors look gorgeous. There are no ugly drying lines showing or anything. And for the record, there's something odd that happened with this painting. 
It was actually my first time painting and explaining what I do at the same time because I'm preparing a Patreon page I want to launch soon and it's been something I've wanted to do for two years but I never felt ready and I wanted this painting to be the first error and I don't know what happened but the mic didn't work so the only sound I've got is from my other camera and it's not incredibly horrible but it's not that great so I don't think I'll post it on Patreon but if you're liking this, I'm counting on fitting up this sketchbook with seaside illustrations, so hopefully you'll get to see one soon and even try it out. So I finished the details on this painting and I'm really happy to see it turn out this way. I told you I was planning to have some fun and part of it is to allow myself to use other mediums than watercolor or watercolor pencils like these Faber-Castell pit pens for example because it's easy to feel we have to box ourselves in one medium when like me you share work online and I think my upcoming Patreon sketchbook works will be a lot of watercolor watercolor pencil, and some other surprise medium. I might have you vote for each month, so I think that could be a fun thing to do. I want to be able to share about what I do under one umbrella like sketchbooks because I love everything. I like to do portraits, landscapes, you name it, because I find it's boring to always do the same thing over and over. I know a lot of people paint just furrows or just forests and they're super successful with it, but I just could never do that. Anyways, the ink pens worked really well on the perfect sketchbook because it's great for watercolor, but also mixed media. And what I was saying before about the tooth of the paper being versatile, you can see it here where it's easy to draw with a fine tip without being bothered by a rough texture, for instance. And I haven't done ink since the 2020 Inktober, I think it was. So it's not like I'm an expert at it, but you see it went super well. It's looking gorgeous next to the watercolor painting and that really motivates me to finish the sketchbook. It's always a win for a perfectionist to do that, right? And I'm also excited to think that I can share some of these paintings with you in depth in the future. Maybe you didn't know that I like ink, but if you've been watching this channel, you know that I like watercolor pencils, so I couldn't help myself but try it out on the Etcher Perfect Sketchbook because I never have before. And I also needed to add a little something in that empty space over there. And for a first time trying watercolor pencils on this paper, I love how easy the coloring is. I think again, the tooth of the paper is important here because watercolor pencils will be hard to use on rough papers. Smooth and slightly grainy papers will be better. Now, if you don't know much about watercolor pencils, the water aspect with them isn't as important as it is with watercolors because there is no need to add a whole bunch of water with that medium. So I'm guessing that ink and watercolor pencils will work well on a lot of the average sketchbooks out there that I generally don't use because I don't like them. But I really love that I can mix and match everything on the perfect sketchbook, in particular watercolor, which is my main medium, and even painting wet washes of paint like you've seen in the landscape I showed you at the beginning, because that's where you really see a sketchbook's flaws. I love the rustic aspect of the watercolor pencils here so far. I could have used another technique to make the background more watercolor-like, smoother. But well, I think it's nice to have this variety in one single page. And for me, it's been a fun way to fill out a sketchbook page. I'm really excited. <laughs> what I didn't tell you is I didn't plan everything in advance too much for once. I had the photos and a rough placement, but that's it. I didn't try to be perfect about it. I think the sketchbook itself is enough since it's the perfect sketchbook. And it's really something I'm working on not to have everything figured out at once. And the thing I appreciate is this size is large enough to play around with adding one big illustration or several small ones like I did. Sometimes really tiny sketchbooks can feel a bit more limiting, but you just need to get your feet wet and start, I think, no matter what the size is. So thank you so much Etcher for sending me another one of your fantastic perfect sketchbooks and to you guys watching this video, 
expect a little sketchbook tour and major summer vibes whenever I finish painting on all pages and a link to the sketchbook in the description of the video. And from here you can watch more of my sketchbook videos and I think many more will come in the future. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time!